It's wonderful to be here, and I want to start off today by thanking you for your participation in this conference and to thank you for everything you're doing to build a clean energy, good jobs future for our country. And let me say that I'm proud to be a member of the Blue Green Alliance Board, proud to have led the Apollo Alliance, and extraordinarily proud that we have merged together to create a more powerful movement to create the right kind of economy for America's future. You're a little behind schedule this morning, so I'm going to get right to the point. I'm going to talk about where we've been over the last few decades in this country and how we need to turn the page and end the era of rampant speculation that destroyed the economy and the communities of this country and turn the page to a new economy that honors workers, that honors the environment, that honors the future. As we meet today, we're still in the grips of the financial crisis that burst upon this country in 2007, a crisis brought on by recklessness on Wall Street, by neglect in Washington, by a set of deliberately policies that let loose the reins on the captains of finance on Wall Street and turned its back on homeowners and consumers across this country. Today, 24 million Americans are without work or can't find full-time work. Nine trillion dollars of household wealth was wiped away like a day trade gone bad. Four million Americans have already lost their homes to foreclosure, and sadly, that number will rise to between eight and 13 million. In my hometown of Sacramento, 18% of the people have already lost their homes, and each and every month, another 3,000 families go into foreclosure. The consequences of this crisis are being deeply felt, and unless we change our economy, not just rebuild it, but remake it, the consequences will last for decades. As Yvette said, I was honored to be appointed by the Congress of the United States in 2009 by Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid. And I know this is a 501c3 conference, but I'm an American citizen, so I'll say it. Boy, do we need Nancy Pelosi back as Speaker of the House of Representatives. But I was appointed, that was on my nickel, by the way, I was appointed to head this commission to investigate the causes of this financial crisis, to look at why major financial institutions failed or would have failed, but for the 24 separate programs with tw trillions of dollars to bail out those institutions. And we were also charged, if we found violations of law, to refer those to the Department of Justice. When we did our work, we looked at millions of pages of documents that had never been seen before. We interviewed 700 witnesses. We held 19 public hearings. And let me just tell you a little bit about what we saw. And let me tell you, for me, this was a journey of revelation. I entered this thinking I knew something about the American financial system. I'd been in business for 20 years. I'd been treasurer of the eighth largest economy in the world. I sat on the pension funds of California which had over $400 billion of assets and were the biggest pension funds in America. But this, for me, was a, a journey of revelation. I was surprised, shocked, and disgusted at what I saw. I saw a financial system that had become so corrupt that it had seminally weakened our economy. I often said I felt like I'd stepped in to my local community bank. And I opened a door and I saw a casino floor as big as New York, New York. And unlike Claude Rains in Casablanca, I was truly shocked. And the fact is that here's what we found. We found that despite the reigning rhetoric out of Wall Street and Washington, that this was the perfect storm and the collision of large forces, this financial crisis was a result of 30 years of deregulatory policies that favored the 1% and turned its back on working men and women and took down all the fences of protection. There was egregious and predatory lending going on in this country since the late 1990s, and the regulators turned their back. The FBI warned in 2004 of an epidemic of mortgage fraud that, if unchecked, would leave us with losses bigger than the SNL crisis. There was increasingly risky investments being made each and every day in hidden products and hidden markets like derivatives. And of course, there was the small fact that there were $13 trillion of mortgage securities, many of them phony and defective, being peddled across the world. We saw failures of regulation. We saw recklessness by Wall Street firms with CEOs 
drove their companies and then our economy over the cliff. And yes, we saw widespread breaches of ethics and accountability. Uh, borrowers were steered in the most expensive loans. We saw that companies in their own emails were acknowledging they were making loans to people they could not afford to pay. And in the end, trillions of dollars of mortgages were peddled to investors throughout the world without those Wall Street banks telling the truth about what was in those mortgages. So where are we today? Where we are today is sadly there seems to be no correlation between who drove this crisis and who's paying the price. There seem to be no consequences for a Wall Street that was spared the trillions of dollars of bailouts. And little has changed. Our biggest banks are bigger. The 10 biggest banks now control 77% of the banking assets in this country. While working men and women have struggled, Wall Street compensation hit a record high of $135 billion in 2010. And the banks and the Republican allies on, in Washington are fighting each and every day to stop reforms. And who would have thought that four years after this financial crisis, Instead of moving to more equality, we now have the lowest wages, ratio of wages to GDP since the Great Depression. And since this recovery, in quotes, started in May of 2009, 92% of the income growth in this country has gone to corporate profits and zero to wages. So here's what we need to do. This powerful alliance, working with other people across this country, we need to turn the page. We need to do a 180. And here are the three big things that I think we need to do to move on. First, we need justice in this country. We don't want hangman justice. We don't want revenge, but we want justice. Americans need to know that there's one justice system in this country. If wrongs have been committed, they need to be righted. If laws have been broken, they need to be punished. I guarantee you, if someone robbed a 7-Eleven and took $1,000, and they were able to settle for $25 with no admission of wrongdoing several days later, they'd be back at it. And that's what's happening right now on Wall Street. <laughs> Secondly, we need reform and real financial regulation. We need to rein in the excesses because in the end, the financial system shouldn't be the center of the American economy. It ought to be the place that's the stable heart providing capital to create jobs and enterprise and wealth. And let me tell you, each and every day, Wall Street is spending tens of millions of dollars in Washington to stop the implementation of the reforms that were passed in 2010. And the only thing that will overcome it is if you organize and you press and you call your congressperson and you say, we want true reform. And finally, this is the biggest thing. It's why we're here today. We don't want to just pump up this economy. What we want to do is we want to remake this economy. In 1980, 15% of the corporate profits in this country came from the financial sector. By 2003, that was 33%. We became an economy of money making money, not money putting people to work and creating products and value for this society. An economy that we want where we make high technology products that produce the green economy and export them throughout the world. So the time has come to invest in education and workforce training, in research and development, in technology, and in the clean energy economy. And BGA is showing the way. And let me just say something. When you look at Jobs 21, think of it as the jobs plan for the 99% in America, not the 1%. And when you look, now, what the Blue Green Alliance and the Apollo team is doing here in California, when you look at the Clean California Green Manufacturing Action Project, you look at the efforts to toughen the toughest energy efficiency standards in the world, you're seeing models that can create millions of jobs. The time has come to make the change, and it's going to happen through the simple art of belief in politics. When I was a college student, one day I went to a lecture by a guy named Allard Lowenstein that some of the older people in this room may remember. A man who spent decades going campus to campus enlisting young people to engage in civil rights and trying to end the war in Vietnam and economic progress for all Americans, not the few. 
And I'll never forget this because it's now almost 40 years since I went to a little room and heard him talk to 20 students. I was interested in politics, but I didn't know what it meant and what it took, and he made it simple. He said that what politics is about, and that's what we're about, we're trying to change the political equation in this country. We're trying to remake the economy. We want a clean energy, good jobs economy. What it's about, what it's about is the simple art of having belief in your heart and then having the discipline and the will and the energy to organize. It's one person believing and then getting 10 people to act and then 100, then 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000, and then a million, and then millions more. And that's our job. And let me tell you, we cannot waste time. Our country is suffering and other countries are on the move. China's spending $66 billion this year on research and development. They're, they've gone from making 6% of the solar panels in this world to 60%. Their plan is not to come in number two. So we got to move, and we've done it before. In the midst of the Civil War with 600,000 Americans dying of disease and on the battlefield, that's when Lincoln charted the Transcontinental Railroad. That's when he passed the Homestead Act that made landowners of millions of Americans. It's when they passed the Land Grant Act to create colleges to train the workforce for the Industrial Revolution. In the Depression, when one third of this country was ill-housed, ill-clothed, as Franklin Roosevelt said, that's when we mobilized the capital of this country to put this country back to work. When World War II started, we had a horse-drawn artillery. Three years and eight months later, we had built the mightiest military machine in the world. And I'll never forget as a young boy going out on the lawn when the Russians put Sputnik up in the sky and my dad pointing to it. We were afraid. The Russians had nuclear weapons. They were in space first. How did we react? Did we cower? Did we retreat? No. We invested in science and education and math. We passed the National Defense Education Act that gave me my scholarship to go to college. We put a man on the moon with the Apollo mission. We can do it again. But let me close by saying this. There are powerful forces who don't want anything to change. And four years after the crash on Wall Street, they are still in control. We got to rise up. We got to organize. One, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and convert this country to the dream we have. Thank you very much for all the work you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you.